All right, welcome everyone to Sunday, the 27th of November. And today we're gonna do the, the uh, transmission of Gene Key 34. And 34 is the shadow of force, the gift of strength, and the city, the divine essence of majesty. Mm, that's so good, right? My dog, today is her birthday but she's passed. But I always remember today as Penny Lane's birthday. And Penny Lane for me was strength and majesty. So I hope for you, those of you who have this in your hologenetic profile, you really claim that majesty. And I want to talk about how we can bring that into our lives. Because this is the gene key of your embodiment. There are a lot of gene keys that are about um, being connected to something greater, and they're all true. This is being connected to something greater, but it's through our embodiment. There are gene keys that, um, you know, like ecstasy that have you experience something uh, in bliss or, or ecstatic that may even have the sense of taking you out of this embodiment. But this gene key is thoroughly your embodiment. And this is why I love it. It's the archetype of the warrior. It is the shiro and the hero's journey. So the question I ask you is, are you the heroine of your own journey? So just think about that for a moment. Check into like the life you have lived up to now. And some of you have birthdays this week. And this is, today's the last day for Gene Key 34. So it would have been the last five days and including today. And so when you have a birthday, take stock of that revolution around the sun and ask yourself, are you the heroine of your own journey? Because Gene Key 34 is, encapsulates the strength of the heroine's journey. And I, I'm going to use the feminine um, ending, hero, hero or heroine. I'm going to use heroine here. Are you your own heroine? And that is, that's the, you're the central character of your play. And so are you honoring yourself as someone who has the strength to get where you are right now? Because 34 is life force energy. It is from the sacral. It is Shakti energy. And those of you at 34, let me know. Do you feel that? Do you have this wellspring of energy inside of you that you know you can tap? You are our teachers in that way. And you're here to get a lot of things done, but you're here to get them done in the flow of life because the shadow is force. And what happens when we force is that we actually lock up that wellspring of energy. Mm. Claudia says, I've been listening to the heroine's journey all week on repeat constantly. Oh, that's so cool. So I want you to imagine this. Uh, we're we're going to do a little embodiment practice with this energy. Because when I, when I first read it, I was like, you know, we can't, this is beyond words. The, the language of Gene Key 34 is embodiment and action. So chances are, if you have this in your hologenetic profile, especially like in your attractor field, um, that's the beginning of that Venus sequence, you know, you're going to be attracted to really embodied people. I mean, there are everyone, when you get embodied, you're attracted to embodied people and less attracted to people who live just in their heads. This is the opposite of that. It's when the energy of Shakti Shakti Ma, the creative force in the universe, is available to you from your navel, from your hara, not in your head. You know, as the, as the human design says, there's no authority inside your head. All the authority comes from your embodiment. 
So for some of you, your authority comes from your emotional wave. Others will come from your sacral and, and some of us from our spleen. And then there's a few others also. Let's see, Jessica. Yeah, welcome sister. You've, you've moved four times. Moved four times in that area. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm just checking in to see here. Katie says, I do, but I need more flow. Awesome. Okay. Well, this is, I think this transmission will support you in getting more flow. So let's imagine this energy has been around since the beginning of time. And I'm going to actually read this right now, because I think before we do our embodiment exercise, this will be cool. So I've been listening to um, Wayne Dyer's transmission and translation of the Tao Te Ching. So the sixth verse, I'm like, I'm starting over now and I'm in the sixth verse. Check this out. 2,500 years ago, Lao Tzu wrote this. The spirit that never dies is called the mysterious feminine. Although she becomes the whole universe, although she becomes the whole universe, her immaculate purity is never lost. Although she assumes countless forms, her true identity remains intact. The gateway to the mysterious female is called the root of creation. Listen to her voice. Listen to her voice. Hear it echo through creation. Without fail, she reveals her presence. Without fail, she brings us to our own perfection. Although it is invisible, it endures and it will never end. Whoa. That, to me, that's the sum of the Tao itself. That is the Tao itself. And Lao Tzu 2,500 years ago calls the Tao itself, the divine feminine. That's Shakti, that's Shakti Maha. That is the primordial energy, the Adi Shakti that created the universe. And this is Jinki 34. So we're imagining, let's kind of, let's, um, let's start to imagine and play with Shakti Ma here. So if you're sitting down, if you're driving, you can just listen and imagine this. But if you are sitting down or making dinner or brushing your teeth, just close your eyes and feel that power inside your navel. Your navel is two inches above your belly button in the center of your body. Feel that power of Shakti Ma, like open space for it through your breath. Breathe into it, open space for it. Now we're going to imagine that we're plants. We're, we're seeds, actually. We're not going to be quite yet plants. We're seeds. And we just had that new moon and we're seeding new things. So let's just imagine that that seed is in the earth, this dark earth, the fertile earth, and it's, it's dark and it's cold out. And it has the energy of this new moon, the new moon being dark. And then as the moon starts to get some of its radiance from the sun, as the world turns, this plant starts to come up. And this, it's the energy of Shakti Ma that's bringing it up. So from a seed, it breaks that shell and it starts to come up and out. And imagine yourself, just do the embodied exercise now of imagining yourself breaking through the seed and then break through the earth and then sprout big and huge. And that energy right there is the energy of 34. It's the strength to break through. It's not a 
team strength, like 14 last week, we were talking about Gene Key 14. That's the ability to gather groups of people. This is the, the solo adventure that we each must go on. Like the heroine's journey, you have lots of guides coming in and, and you have lots of teachers coming in, but you do this journey yourself. 34 is the journey yourself, the individual plant experiencing the aliveness of the universe. That is it. So then come back to that aliveness in the universe in your embodiment. Like you don't have to do it. That's the that's the trick. You don't have to do it. This is already happening through you. It's the aliveness happening through you. Now imagine this kind of force. It's the same force that delivers a baby. For those of you who have delivered a baby, I had a miscarriage and I was able to feel that force. I was like, holy shit. Your body takes over and it like bears down in the uterus and something is happening. Like that's that the body knows what to do with Shakti Ma. She in the embodiment, she in the forms. This is the Tao says that she takes on many forms. Although she assumes countless forms, her identity remains intact. Like she is always Shakti Ma but she takes on form and that form she takes on is you, is me, it's all the things. It's all the 10,000 things that the Tao talks about. But we get lost in the 10,000 things. And here's the reason why there's a shadow to 34, the shadow being force. The shadow being when that energy comes up into our minds, then it starts to become about what I want, right? Can you imagine? It's not just selfish. I don't mean it that way. I actually mean it more self-preservation, fear. When you're afraid, when you're afraid you're not gonna have enough, be enough, get enough, then that life force energy, you move it up into your head and what happens? You become this single-minded. Can you imagine that, that fear that has the energy attached to it? it? It becomes driven for driven sake. That's one, that's the, that's like the reactive nature of this gene key. And it forces its way through. And then the repressed completely collapses. Like, I don't have any power. I don't have any power. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do things. I mean, that's one of the things that when, if you're inside my community, remember inner circle, we, we always catch ourselves saying things like, well, I'll try. That's the most disempowering statement you can make. You know, and Yoda says it, right? Because <laughs> I mean, Jinky 34, that's Yoda. <laughs> Let the force be with you. Yoda knows the Tao. So when he's training Luke Skywalker with the blindfold and the laser, it's like you have to feel the Tao, the force, the, the, the capital F force, not the shadow force. You have to feel the Tao. Can you feel the way it moves? Because when you do, you become empty. You become empty of the you, of the identity. You become empty of your preferences. Because actually you've seen through your preferences. My mind says, I want this. How do I know? You know, my mind is just, it's like my mind is a child. So I can go in that way. Okay, well, let's go in that way. And then we can feel, if we're attuned, we can feel like that's going against the tide. Now it's not saying, like last week, Jinky 14, that there's, there's some work to do. You know, I have Saturn on my moon, so I'm all about like getting shit done, being ultra disciplined, 
having like work, getting the work done, not falling in the face of obstacles and challenge. That's, that's the warrior archetype. But 34 says, you've got to surrender deeply to the Tao, to the way. Listen. You know, so those of us who have moved this year, you know, some of us wanted to move, but there's probably a lot of us who did not want to move. Like I did not, I did and I did not, right? Like that's not true. I have to say that there's a part of me that wanted to move. I sourced it. I just didn't want to move myself. So I knew that it was going to take action from the outside to move me. And there, it was such a comfortable place. But the Tao, the movement is, is time to go. Time to upgrade your consciousness. Try and time to expand your consciousness. You can call it challenge. You can call it opposition. You can call it whatever you want. But why don't you call it the Tao? Why don't you call it an opportunity? Yeah, it's going to mean your mental body, your emotional body, your physical body needs to have some tending to. Like I went to bed at 7.30 last night. Right? The, you know, the body needs some tending to. I made sure and had a bunch of protein and I was super hydrated because I'm attuned to what the body needs in order to align with the strength that's inside my embodiment to do the thing that my mind might say, you can't do it. You cannot do this. Well, it's, it's the way it's happening. Yesterday, my, one of my dear friends is moving her dome from one place to another. And that's like, it's been there for 14 years. It's a huge deal. And she called me on the way and said, well, the thing I was going to do with the wood underneath it, I can't do because the wood's all rotten. So now I need to do this other thing, you know, and I, and she goes, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work and it just is what it is. This is her evolution as well, by the way, not Corey. So she's Gene Key 20 uh, life work and her evolution's 34. And so she, she has like so much strength. I mean, She's epic in the amount of things she can get done. But she, she said the words. She said the exact words of her evolution, which will allow her to be present, right? Because that is the programming partner 20, the city of presence. If you are present in your life, you have access to the strength that will not deplete you, that will not have you running into a brick wall that will not have other people hating on you <laughs> because you're single-minded, you know, making it my way or the highway. You will be in the Tao. You will be in the flow. And that's the message. You become the Olympian, the, the, the heroine, the hero. You are that archetype because you just see what needs to be done and your embodiment springs to action and you do it. And this gene key is, has so much courage in it. And it, it's not, it's not pre-planned <laughs> when you're in your embodiment and you see something that needs to be done. You definitely have the hero archetype to just go do it. And then later people will say like, how did you even know to do that? And you'll be like, I have no idea because you didn't intend to be a hero. You didn't intend to be a heroine. You just showed up for the moment in presence, listening. That's, that's the key right there. And we've said this many times in these transmissions with the gene keys. We've said, I mean, I think listening in silence, like it's going to trump every single city, right? Like that's the gold in these cities, the, 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 the place to lock in, to find the key to, to open the lock of the cities is, is the deep listening to Shakti Ma to the Tao, to the way the river is meandering. And that doesn't mean you don't grieve. It doesn't mean you don't have an emotional body reaction. It doesn't mean that your mind doesn't freak the fuck out. But we have tools for those, right? 
and we can hold space for ourselves. If we think of ourselves in parts rather than as this is all me. No, I am the witness of all these parts. And when one part is really feeling it, I just can nurture that one part and say, you're okay. You're okay. You've got this. You're okay. And then keep coming back to the context that we're creating, the context of the hero, the heroine or the hero, the context of this is for me, not against me. The world is truly my oyster. So I'm going to read one more quote. Um, just, just, you know, there's a lot out there to, to support us in this energy. And Rumi, another, another ancient poet said, when I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of distress and anxiety. Can we relate to that? So if, if there's any, any way that we thought that life was easier in ancient times, I don't think this would have ever been written had someone not experienced this. So when I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of distress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without any pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me. It's looking for me and it's attracting me. Imagine that, imagine this Shakti Ma energy that feeds a life in the Tao, in the way. And some of it sometimes doesn't make sense or maybe it makes sense, but the mind doesn't want it because the mind has been trained to be on a habit trail wheel. Like remember those little hamsters just running and running and running and we've developed patterns of feeding that running. And right now in the modern world, we're going into that pattern called the holidays and all the energy is amping up. So even if you have a lot to do, your invitation is to come into the inner listening, which requires the inner silence and stillness in order to move in a way that causes and creates, let's say one of the gene key one, beauty. So I came to this house and you'll notice some of my things here and I had it fully cleaned because I said to myself, I am here no matter where I am to create beauty. So I have flowers sitting next to me it's just a reminder that I'm not in a holding pattern, that life is now. Life is right here, right now. It's not going to happen later. It's happening right now. And when I acknowledge that presence, Gene Key 20, the programming partner of 34, so those of you who have that in your son, this is your evolution. So your struggle, your obstacle is to be present. You can get caught in superficiality. And when you get caught up in superficiality, you lose your power, you lose your strength, and you're in the shadow frequency. So how we bring ourselves up and elevate our experience, elevate our vibration is through being present with this energy that wants to move, it wants to act. It doesn't want necessarily to be still, it wants to be in movement. And there's plenty of things to move and do. You'll know that. It's also like this channel 
3420 is a channel in human design and it's the channel of charisma. If some, a lot of you have it, it's, it makes you a manifesting generator if you have it. And what's so funny about this one is I was listening to a transmission from Ra and Ra said that if you go up to someone who has a, this channel and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm bleeding. <laughs> I need your help. They'll say, can you just wait? I'm really busy right now. <laughs> I said that to my friend and her partner and her partner just laughed because he's like, that's so her. And she has jinky, uh, she has this channel of charisma, the ch AKA the channel of busyness. So this channel, this, this 34 is going to want to act. It's going to want to get things done. It's going to want to experience life through its embodiment. And the key to it is being present. And when it's present, it then becomes a conduit for majesty. And majesty is the frequency of the divine in your embodiment. But the thing about it is, there's an absence of identity. All the cities have this. And, and so as you get older, because um, this is definitely mature spirituality, as you get older in your life, practice now, but practice dropping the identity, especially when you're older. See, start to see life in the Tao, in the way, as the way, as the divine on earth. That doesn't mean you're a doormat because if you think that, then you still have work to do because the doormat is the shadow frequency. So it has nothing to do with being disempowered or a doormat. This is actually full sovereignty. This is full power. This is full archetypal power of the Olympian full archetypal power of the hero and the heroine. So when you are occupying that absent and maybe not even absent, I mean, that's the city, but maybe what we can say at the gift frequency, it's that I don't really need to listen to my mind. I already, I already have my mind trained enough where I catch it in going off in places that it won't serve me. So one final thing about this city, and then, and then we're going to end so we can pop over to the, the Zoom link and do our razor's edge. And we have some cool stuff planned to integrate this teaching in walking the razor's edge. Plus, I have a download for Sagittarius season, a really fun, um, it's like a fun next level of the lofty questions that we went through last week. But before I end, I want to tell you that this, this, this is really important for a lot of us because a lot of us have practiced yoga, we chant, we do martial arts. In, in martial arts, like Qigong is known as the empty force. So that gives you an idea of majesty. Majesty is the empty force. It is like water, the most powerful element. So um, go back to that energy of the seed that has to, the, of the life force that breaks the seed and then it has to break the earth and then, it, and then it uses its Shakti to open. And that's the same energy as humanity comes, we, you know, as our evolution, we were, we were four-legged and then we come up to two legs and because we get a spine and the spine becomes erect. And that spine erect is the thing that allows us to be the conduit between heaven and earth because our feet are on the ground, but we can look up at the sky. Four-legged look at the ground. I mean, they're super grounded. <laughs> I love them but our job is different. Our job in evolution is to bring heaven to earth and we bring it through a spine. That's Jinky 34, the Shakti energy through the spine. And then 
if you practice mantra or if you practice a mudra, you know, these symbols, these prayers with our body were invented by Gene Key 34. <laughs> I like saying it that way. They weren't, but it's kind of cool to say it that way. So if you have this in your hologenetic profile, spontaneously use your body to express your divinity on earth. So dance, move, do yoga. And what's better than going to a yoga class, and I have nothing against that, as you all know, is to do it yourself. Because do you remember after the first Divine Feminine Summit, I created mudras for each of the archetypes? I downloaded them. That's Jinky 34. It doesn't, it doesn't copy, the, it's lost in translation. It's still okay to do those things, of course, because it's teaching something else. But the genius of 34 is the spontaneous movement of the hands, the body, the arms, the throat, chanting, the movement, the the empty force how do you move energy in your embodiment you know like this gives full permission to be alive like this is why i love the work i do because if i would have just been a lawyer or like gotten a phd i would be so in my head trying to do shit from my head and really missing out that there's so much fun and genius in our embodiment and one of them is to connect to God through the way we move and through the way we chant and through the sounds that we like to utter. Maybe the first yogis were born in November, at the end of November. <laughs> you know, why not, right? Maybe they were born and they just use their embodiment to discover, wow, when I move my spine like that, when I move my hips like that, I feel God. <laughs> so this is, this is what's possible with 34. So I'm just going to look at some of your comments. Yeah, the very softest thing of all can ride like a galloping horse through the hardest of all things. Yeah, thank you for that quote from the Gene Keys. I think that's the Tao, Robin. Probably the Richard Rudd quoting the Tao. Vanessa, you're 34 too. Oh my gosh, I did not know that you are also 34. That's right. Happy birthday, sister. It's all about embodiment. Yeah. They're so, they're so beautiful. We're just looking at your... Mm. Yeah, Jane says, I noticed that pattern of running, especially in regard to my business. I'm stepping back a moment to patiently re release this programming. Yeah, because, you know, in 14, what we were talking about last week, there's a lot at stake. You know, we have a big vision and we get to move toward our vision. Um, and we're learning how to do this thing called have a big vision with that energy of strength behind us, like a wind to our sail. That's my learning of this. I'm super grateful for it. So, all right, sisters, I'm gonna let this transmission marinate. And in 15 minutes, we'll jump over to the Zoom for Walking the Razor's Edge. It's the final Walking the Razor's Edge for this 2020 year <laughs> that's about ready to end. Thank goddess. Um, and we'll resume these inside of the Evolving Sisters Network starting in January. I'll let you all know 
we're unfolding a bunch of new things as we get the website complete and all the structures complete. So you'll get notices through here as well as through the email. And then in January, I'm going to start doing these on YouTube. So that'll be fun. I've gotten a lot of other sisters are not on Facebook. So it's been really cool that I I'm reposting these to YouTube and people are finding it and they're just coming, you know, what I'm looking for is looking for me. And so our sisterhood community is coming together. So we'll use that platform to gather on Sundays, and then we'll still pop over uh, starting in January uh, on our Zoom to have an all community call. We'll put more structure to it, but this has been really cool for me, really grounding and heart opening for me to meet with you at the uh, 10 a.m. Pacific hour after our live streams. I just appreciate you all so much. I'm so grateful for you. Community is my anchor. It's my grounding force. And it's really why I'm building it. it I didn't really know that that was what I was here to do. It just like the Tao, it found me. And I find myself doing these things. And so remember that you know, they ever, everybody says everything you need to know is already inside you. And I think that gets so misinterpreted because there's a shit ton of things I don't know and I have to go find them. <laughs> but what's the one thing I do know that only I know? And that is how the Tao, how Shakti Ma is living in me. And what is the way in me? And so a coach can guide me, but the best coaches guide me to follow me, right? Because that is the, that's the way, the way, the Tao, the way it works the best. It's the way it harnesses the strength. So thank you. I love you. And I will see you in a few minutes on the Zoom.